G'day, chaps. It's I, Clumpetcher139. While I absolutely love Arkham City as it's my favorite in the saga, I won't deny that there have always been some story issues that never sat right with me. The twist reveals, while cool, feel like they're only there for shock value rather than being intricately thought out with the plot in mind. Why did they deal an underhand blow to Strange by revealing it was actually Raish behind everything? Why was Joker actually Clayface for any reason other than to shock the audience? Why does Freeze fight Batman instead of just talking it out with him like a sensible human being? I've explained most of these gripes away in other videos, but one that I've still not been able to figure out is this. What the hell is Talia's plan when she rescues Batman? I've been trying to wrap my brain around it for years, and for all those years, it just never made sense. Why does she walk in here claiming she can make Joker immortal when she knows how dangerous he is? Why doesn't she just stab Joker now and give Batman the cure right here, rather than take Joker away so Batman needs to save her, only to then stab Joker and give Batman the cure anyway so you didn't need to be saved? There are so many stupid inconsistencies and logic leaps with Talia's plan that it's generally what most of you ask about when talking about Arkham City plot holes. We could claim that she's just a terrible tactician and didn't really have a plan, but then why would she have the tracker so that Batman could follow her? And then, why would she stab Joker rather than letting Bruce do it? Oh, yeah, because she knew Bruce wouldn't kill Joker and even says so right to Bruce's face. You didn't need to- Why? You would never do it. You left me no choice. She's clearly had this whole thing planned out and isn't stupid. So then, why the hell doesn't this plan make any sense? Well, I think I solved it. I think I finally have an explanation for Talia's plan. And while it will no doubt be a little convoluted and a lot confusing, I think you'll agree that it makes the story of Arkham City make that much more sense. In the slight off chance you've forgotten, allow me to give some context for the scene. At the beginning of the game, Batman was poisoned by Joker. Joker did this in an attempt to make Batman help him find a cure for his current sickness. So, Batman spends the entire rest of the game running around, trying to find a cure for him and Joker. On this quest to find the cure, Batman must track down Ra's al Ghul for a sample of his blood. Blood which has an enzyme key to creating the cure. When he finds Ra's, he also finds his daughter, Talia, who Bruce has a bit of a romantic history with. Talia wants Bruce to kill her father and take over the League of Assassins. But since Batman doesn't kill, that ain't gonna happen. Batman ends up taking a sample of blood and getting it back to Mr. Freeze to synthesize the cure, which is successful. Unfortunately, making Freeze actually give the cure over is unsuccessful. And while the two are fighting, Harley Quinn breaks into the safe and steals the remaining vial. We are led to believe that she got it back to Joker, who drank it and became healthy again. Batman tries fighting the now healthy Joker in hopes that there is still some cure left, but ends up getting trapped under falling debris before he can finish the fight. Joker has him in the perfect position to kill him, but before he can deliver the finishing blow, Talia steps in with the opportunity of a lifetime. She offers Joker the secret to immortality if he lets Batman go. Seems like a pretty good deal to Joker, so he accepts and the two leave. After Batman stops Protocol 10, it's revealed that Joker and Talia are waiting at the movie theater. When he bursts in to save her, Joker demands that Batman hand over the cure. Why would he do that if he's already taken it and has been cured? Before we even have time to process this question, Talia breaks out of her ties and stabs Joker in the back. She then casually walks away and hands Batman the cure, saying that she took it from Harley Quinn back in the steel mill. But before Batman can take the cure himself, Talia is shot in the back by a still very sickly looking Joker, and the one she stabbed is revealed to be Clayface. She dies from the gunshot, and fighting ensues. So, for a bit more context that the previous context was necessary for, while Batman fights his way to Joker through the steel mill, he eventually comes across Harley Quinn tied up and gagged in the assembly line. Well, who could have put her there? She had the cure and was trying to get it to Joker, so what is she doing tied up? It turns out Talia intercepted her on the way in, stole the cure back, and tied her up. Joker merely had Clayface standing in for him to look like he was cured. So what that means is, when Talia steps in to save Batman from Joker, she has the cure that's needed to save Batman. So by now, I think you see the problem. If he was going to stab Joker anyway and just give Batman the cure, why not do it here in the steel mill and save your lover boy's life right here and now? She even says after stabbing Joker that she did it because... 
I had to save you. So why not save Batman when he seriously needs saving? Well, like I said, I think I have an answer. But that still requires a bit more context. Please stay with me, this is gonna get good eventually. So remember Ra's al Ghul who I mentioned way earlier? Yeah, so he's dying. He's essentially become a walking corpse by the time we fight him for his blood in the game. And he tells us after the fight that the Lazarus Pit he's been using to stay alive for centuries is corrupting his mind. He's not sure if he'll be the same person going in that eventually comes out each time he uses it. Which is why he wants a successor. His ideal successor is Batman, because he knows exactly what Bruce is capable of. And if swayed to the League's way of thinking, would be an unrelenting force for their idea of good. At the same time, he's been in cahoots with Hugo Strange on the greatest project in the League's history, Arkham City. On the surface, a maximum security prison where inmates are free to do whatever they wish behind the walls. In secrecy, a plan to cull the criminals of Gotham with missile strikes, killing all of them without mercy. Raish has been preparing for this plan for years, but it's come to the point that he isn't sure if he'll be able to see it through. He doesn't just want, he needs Batman to take his place. So when Batman doesn't, it's more than just a slap in the face to Raish. And this leads us back to Talia. She wants nothing more than to appease her father. She would do anything if it was to her father's wishes. Except maybe die, that one might be off the table, but point being, if Raish wanted Batman as head of the League, he would get Batman as head of the League. Even if Talia had an opportunity to lead the League herself. In Arkham Knight's DLC Season of Infamy, we got to play through a sort of epilogue for the League of Assassins called Shadow War. After completing this mission, you can return to the hospital where Raish has been hiding out and find a tape he recorded back before Arkham City. It's to Talia, and essentially repeats everything I just mentioned about him needing a successor. However, with one added detail. If Talia cannot convince Batman to join their ranks, the League is hers. Talia, if Batman cannot be persuaded to join us, I leave the League to you. This single line of very missable dialogue, I think completely explains away Talia's plan in the steel mill. Talia didn't kill Joker here, and instead lured him away, as one final opportunity to test Batman's worthiness to lead the League. Remember, Talia wants nothing more than to appease her father, so even after their supposed falling out when Raish put a knife to her throat, she still wants to grant his wishes. She saw this situation as one final opportunity to see if Bruce could lead the League and took it. And in the very likely chance that he failed, she leads the League instead. Let me explain a bit more. Talia knows that Protocol 10 is going down right this second. That collapsing roof that trapped Batman was from a missile strike hitting the steel mill. She knows damn well this was the plan her father has been building up for years, and it needs to go through. So her plan is simple. Draw Batman away. If she can lure Batman away, Protocol 10 will go off without a hitch. Every single inmate of Arkham City will be dead, and her father's plan will be a success. Better yet, consider what else could happen if she lured Batman away. She was captured by Joker, who is without question the biggest criminal stain on this earth. If anyone deserves to die tonight, it's absolutely him. Meaning, if there's anyone Batman might be willing to kill, it's Joker. Which also means that this could be the catalyst for Batman breaking his no-kill rule and joining the League. If he were willing to let Protocol 10 play out in favor of saving Talia, he clearly values her life more than the petty criminals. And if that's the case, it's very likely he would value Joker's life even less and be willing to kill him. So if he does, he's one step closer to being willing to kill Raish and become head of the League, fulfilling her father's wishes. And if he still doesn't budge and kill Joker, Protocol 10 still went through. So at least half of his wishes were fulfilled, this one being much more important than finding a successor. But what about the events that actually panned out? Did Talia take those into account as well, or was she really stupid for only counting on Batman simping for her? Well, in short, yeah. Batman didn't take the bait, albeit after some convincing, and decided to stop Protocol 10 rather than pursue Talia. This is against her father's wishes, but still works in her favor. When she kills Joker in the movie theater, she notes how Batman would never do it. And by now, she absolutely knows he would never do it because he just stopped Protocol 10 and her father. 
If he wasn't willing to watch the basic criminal scum burn to the ground, in what world is he also going to kill Joker? She gets the memo by this point and drops the damsel in distress act, finishing the job that Batman never would. But because she still cares for Bruce and doesn't want to see him die, she still gives him the cure. Now, this is the worst situation for Talia. Protocol 10 has failed, her father is dead, though she doesn't know that yet, and Batman is not taking up the head of the League. Her father's wishes are in shambles and she has failed. Except, not entirely, because now she's head of the League. It may not be Raish's first plan for things, but it is still his wish in the event everything goes wrong. Talia is now head of the League of Assassins. Her plan honestly makes a lot of sense with this explanation, right? Talia wants to appease her father, so goes out of her way to make an, albeit convoluted, plan to get Batman to cooperate. And even if he doesn't, she still comes out on top in the end by taking over the League. It's literally only a winning scenario here for Talia. There isn't a single situation where he doesn't come out on top. Except the only thing she didn't account for. Ironically, being something Batman himself said during Protocol 10. She doesn't know, Joker. She's out of her depth. I need to save her. There was just no way she could have accounted for Clayface. Which is why it's the one area where her plan backfires. Because it really is as simple as she didn't know Joker was Clayface. For all intents and purposes, fake Joker is the real thing, so she doesn't bat an eye when she kills him. She wasn't expecting the real Joker to come in and shoot her in the back because... Seriously, who would? It's the one oversight in her otherwise pretty damn smart plan. I don't know what I was doing when all this suddenly clicked with me, but by god I'm glad I was doing it, because this helped explain so much that I always felt was just completely unexplainable. Like, I've been able to explain just about every other story contrivance in Arkham City. Why didn't Strange reveal Batman's identity when he said he would do so if Bruce ever tried to stop him? Because Batman isn't trying to stop him until Protocol 10 actually commences, and by then, he believes himself to be unbeatable. Why does Freeze fight Batman instead of just giving him the cure and asking for help to save Nora? Because he's a cold guy who still doesn't trust Batman because of how he spared Ferris Boyle back in the day, so figures brute force is the best way to make him cooperate rather than words. Also, because Batman is technically working with Joker to make this cure, and since Joker has Nora, he probably believes Batman is in on this plan. He's just not a trustworthy guy. Why is Joker secretly Clayface for any reason other than to surprise the audience? Because, as Joker himself says, it's important to keep up appearances. All the other factions thought he was weak and dying by this point, so his men were losing morale. He hired Clayface to give them a confidence boost as they were sent off to war against Penguin, Two-Face, and Tiger. The illusion that your boss is suddenly healthy again would be a big morale boost to make you ready to fight again. And why did Talia lure Joker away with the promise of immortality only to break free and stab him in the back later, rather than just stab him right then and there? It was to test Batman's worthiness to join the League one last time. And with that, I think I've explained away every potential plot hole or inconsistency in Arkham City. If there are any that I missed, or you have any from the other games you need me to explain, leave them in the comments and maybe I'll get a video out of them. With that in mind, do all the YouTube stuff, because I need a morale boost of my own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.